Hi there, and welcome to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, I'm Eric Stroma. And I know that you're big on duct tape. You know what? Duct tape is uh, probably... There have been things that have saved the world. There's been penicillin, antibiotics. There have been many, many things. Duct tape is probably number two. Duct tape. But how about masking tape? Not as good. Not as good. But duct tape is fantastic. No, my, listen, masking tape, don't get me wrong. I love the masking tape, but the duct tape, it's almost like it, it's part of my Okay, my but yeah. l- work with me here. Yeah. We're talking about, thought we would talk about things to do with our walls, because it isn't just about finding a picture and a piece of artwork and putting it on the wall. Yes, you can do that, but you may not have the money for that, or you may just want to do something that's more creative, like a crazy random design using masking tape. Kind of in a herringbone pattern. Now, now, here's the thing about masking tape. They've actually come up... Is it 3M? I guess that's the brand. Oh, yeah, they, they have different colors. They've come up with crazy colors. Right. And also the washi tape stuff. Oh, I know. Well, this so, is, yeah, you're right. I mean, they're... But this you, is painting. So, you're gonna, oh, you're, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So, so oh, here's wow. what we're going to do. So we're going to... We're talking about things to do that are kind of funky and cool and great to your walls. Yeah. Really creative. DIY. Don't have to be artistic. The idea is that you get a piece of canvas... You know how you buy those canvas... Pre, preformed. It's already yeah, pre- preformed. Yeah. Okay. And then you use your, not your duct tape, although I guess you could, but I was just thinking plain old masking tape, not even the pretty washy, not even just the, the different the blue color. stuff. Blue, camel, what is boring, whatever. And paint over the whole thing. Well, first, create a crazy design. Like just use spray paint and go crazy. Crazy colors and blobs and flowers and things. Yeah. And then you put uh, the masking tape over the entire thing and then paint over it in white and then when you peel it off you're going to end up with oh i see so kind of like cool, geometric patterns yeah right. okay. in a herringbone pattern so you're making your own paintings kind of cool well you know it's great if you've never done striping you know this is that concept where the tape becomes the negative of it right so anything that you have the tape over obviously is not going to bleed through so yeah that's a great idea what's mm-hmm. the matter with that and you're big on framing Wallpaper. Yeah, you know, listen. Now, f- first of all, let's get into this basic idea. So inexpensive, accessible is the key word, ways to kind of gussy up your own walls. Now, a couple of different things, f- reasons for doing this. Number one, it looks great. It's inexpensive, number two. Number three, it changes the acoustic quality of the room. Mm-hmm. For example, here in the studio, if you see these these foam panels that Which, by I, the way, they I so are not eloquently moving. hung with <laughs> such care and love. They're not moving. But, but it changes the sound quality. Mm-hmm. Even paintings on a wall or, mm-hmm. or fabric or any of the things that we're talking about. In recording studios, oftentimes they'll just frame panels of egg crates or acoustical material that just gives the the feeling of the room a different a different vibe because it gives you that sound quality that doesn't mm-hmm. sound like you're in a hollow empty room. Yeah. So any of these things that we're talking about will actually improve the the, the sound. sonic quality of the room as well. The richness of it as exactly. well as the look. I mean, I love the idea of getting some fabric or wallpaper yeah. and framing that are maybe already have existing frames, but it, it really now becomes art, doesn't it? I it mean, really does, uh-huh. yeah. And, and you know, instead of a bare wall, why not just put stuff up that makes it feel, and it, it definitely feels more cozy and it's more visually appealing. Or you know? what about wrapping some fabric around an existing piece of styrofoam or wood and then staple it in the back and get like three... three like a triptych, like a panel of three things. That's great. Because it looks really fancy. It and, does and look fancy. It could be like a headboard almost you know sure or, could, yeah. or like a hallway you could do the thing. same thing with with big you know framed canvases and then you know attach anything to the canvas and hang the canvas up it's very very easy to do and then when you light it right with like you have the fancy artwork lighting but if yeah. you were to almost get like a you know like a row of this these lights that can just right now from the ceiling. Yeah, track down. lighting. Track yeah. lighting. Yeah, you just hang it on the ceiling Wouldn't and it's directional and then you highlight every little thing in the in the space. It's great. What about like an old picture frame mm-hmm. and then you can go ahead and affix prints to the, you know, the backside facing out so that you hang that picture frame. I'm sorry, like an old window, window. frame. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like an old a window frame. Window like a barn something. window that's yeah. distressed looking. Put the pictures in the panes oh, facing outward. You can either cute? just tape them to the back of the, of the glass. It looks fantastic. So to me, that almost looks better than a regular frame because now it's like a collage. Now there you, you have like six or, you know, eight or how you know many. That, you know that feeling when you hang up pictures and 
the person that's come over isn't in the photos. Mm -hmm. Or like I, I remember walking into my mom and dad's office at one point and there were no pictures of me. It was just oh. my brother. <laughs> oh, no. Did you just bring your own picture with yeah, you? I brought my own. That's why I started just providing my own photos <laughs> wherever I went. So <laughs> my, like my mother-in-law, Marilyn, does not have a picture of me on the refrigerator. She has everybody else, ev all the other spouses, but oh. no picture of me. Oh. So I brought my own and put it up there. <laughs> well, she's she's missing out. She doesn't care oh. about me. Oh. Well, okay, yeah, it might. makes me sad. <laughs> well, quickly, let's talk about something happy. How about a magnetic Scrabble board that is almost larger than life, and especially if you have someone like my husband who's really into word games, you know, he's just quite the wordsmith, and then he loves, you know, any kind of uh, a puzzle to kind of put it I, together. By the way, I think William Kane may be a genius. <laughs> he's know, very <laughs> smart with that stuff. He's, like, don't, I would never go against him in Scrabble. It would be a waste of time. Well, am I right? Or not? He's pretty good. I mean, you're, good. you're very good too. Yeah, I, yeah, I, no, he's pretty good. So, but this, the idea here is that you, you know, the idea is you're creating a larger than life uh, Scrabble board. And, you know, if you, if you have all these magnets, why not? It's a DIY magnetic Scrabble board itself. And it doesn't have to be a board for Scrabble tiles at all. You know, the idea is you can get a good supply of vintage Scrabble tiles, about 400 of them, and you can use them in a creative way. That's great. They make perfect magnets. And then you just kind of turn this into a, I don't know, you get like for seven bucks, go to Lowe's and get a sheet metal from you know, the big box store, like 24 by 36. Yeah. And then a piece of thin plywood trim and then some liquid nail. And now you have... The makings of a huge Scrabble board. And then, and as, and as, then people come in and spell their own things on yeah. the board. Yeah, that's great. Isn't that fun? It's fun, yeah. Well, we are just beginning because we have a lot of fun ways to finally do something to your walls. Because, you know, a lot of times we get intimidated. It doesn't cost you much at all. In fact, no. maybe nothing. Eric Stormer, Cindy Dole, you're listening to Home Wizards. Welcome back. You're listening to Home Wizards and the Righteous Brothers. Yes. <laughs> I'm Cindy Dole. And I'm Eric Stromer, <laughs> and, and I have not lost that love and feeling. <laughs> oh, not, not us, because we're nope. Home Wizards, and we love to help you feel good about where you live. And we're talking about ways to do very cool things to those walls of yours. I mean, how often have you looked at a certain room, and you go, you know, I need to fill that that just vacant wall. You yeah, know? and maybe I don't have a million bucks to go out and buy a bunch of art yeah. at this point. What can we do? What's the solution? So we were just talking about this really cool thing. If you have someone in the family, um, or maybe it's you who loves games like Scrabble, this is a larger-than-life Scrabble board that you make really easily, really inexpensively. Um, it's a little bit of sheet metal. It's a little bit of plywood and framing. But the idea is now that's the that's the it's going to be a magnetic board, by the way. That's right. But if you have some extra Scrabble letters in an old game that's sitting around the house, you're going to turn those into, you know, your artwork because now those are going to go on your, your metal board. But what I love is you get some magnet and you, you put, uh, you, you super glue, um, strong rare earth magnets that you can find on eBay to the backs of the little Scrabble pieces. But then what's really kind of cool, because how many times have you played Scrabble and then you say, okay, I need to look at the dictionary. Is that really a word? Yeah, that's right. I don't know. Is that really a word? Yeah. And so to kind of kind of poke fun at that, you can cover the sheet metal, kind of decoupage it with an old dictionary, pages of an old dictionary. Oh, that's a cute idea, yeah. And so now it still is going to be strong enough to hold, to secure the Scrabble pieces. But then imagine this larger-than-life frame that you put in a hallway or somewhere, so maybe it's in a game room, and as you walk by, you know, you have the word across, the word vertically, and you kind of keep the game going. Yeah, and somebody always... Comes in and, you know, Change. guests always change and put yeah. some, you know, dirty word up yeah. there. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Great. Have you ever done something like this where you, you uh, blow up your Instagram pictures? Well, you know, I've done this uh, on a couple of these different shows I've done on TV where they'll they'll take a print and then there, there are these services out yeah. there that can turn any print into an adhesive decal. Which is amazing. Which is amazing yeah. because think about it, it and, and they don't stick permanently. Yeah. They, they can peel off again. It's kind of like the, rubbery. And the good news is, is if it's a rental and Perfect. you want to do some kind of a mural feeling, you can you know do some beautiful picture that you've shot and then turn it into one of these, uh, these adhesive panels, goes up. 
And then when you move, you just take it down, roll it up, and go away and go to the next one. It's like, you know, you're putting up your tent somewhere else. See? I'm not yeah. leaving my art behind. I'm, I'm not, taking not, it with me. Not me. Yeah. No way. You can also do the same thing with liquid starch and fabric on a wall. It's almost like if it's a rental, you, would, you wouldn't need to do this if you were living there. But if it's a rental, liquid starch... You know, can can literally keep the fabric adhered to the wall for the time that you're there. And then when you want to walk away, you just pull it off. Because a lot of times the rental agreements say, you know, the walls must be white and be returned to what they were when you moved in. So mm-hmm. if that's the situation, this is a, a great fix for something like that. And you can peel that off okay, Yeah, right? it's very easy to peel off again. Now, here's one that's kind of cool. It's the idea of turning a painting into pixel art. Right? Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. Right. And you could probably, we'll put this on the website. You probably could Google it and find that there are a lot of different tutorials online. But imagine a photo. Let's say you had a beautiful photo of some kind of a landscape. And what you do is that now you're going to turn this into little pixels, into little squares, right? Right. And so the photo, you know, you would first open the photo. You do this like in, in Photoshop, the photo that you want to work with. And maybe if you aren't good at Photoshop, you could take it somewhere. They can do this for you. But imagine turning a, f- a photo of, let's say, a, the beach with the waves and the sun setting, and it becomes little teeny tiny 10 to 20 pixels wide. And you zoom in and zoom in, and now it becomes like little tiles, little squares that are indescript. So when you when you have the tiles, you can't tell what it is. It's not the picture sure, in detail. Sure, it's yeah, more yeah. like this blurry. Oh, look! There's kind of like a a series of squares that look like a color blue. That might be the ocean. Oh, look! There's kind of the sun setting. Right, right. Kind so of so what you're doing is you're you're superimposing. Yeah. Uh, like let's say you're doing it at twelve inches by twelve inches. If you want to do a bigger mural, so as you come in. Like in Photoshop, for example, you can you can size it so that each 12 inch by 12 inch square becomes this certain amount of pixels, right? Mm-hmm. And then you're going to take that and template that onto the wall, copying you know the little squares with a paintbrush with individual colors of gray or whatever it yeah. is if you're doing a, a cloud scene. So it's it's kind of artistically advanced, but the program makes it easier. But we'll show, we'll put it on the website so you can see what we're talking about because digital photography basically is just a bunch of little squares Right. That are superimposed into an image that give it what it, you know, give it the image it looks like. Well, I think so you could go either way. I mean, if you're artistic, you could turn it into a painting, but why not just, couldn't you just print it out of your computer, your printer? And just put that up. From, from the Photoshop. That's because it. That still is like, it looks, that has that same look. Sure, exactly. You know, it's it's pixels for dummies. That's very cool. And, or maybe you could even take it to the, the Kinko's places of the world, and they could do the same thing, because they have Photoshop. They sure Turning do, Turning yeah. your photo into now these little teeny tiny squares of just blobs of color. Very cool. And it becomes kind of, indis- you know, nondescript, modern interesting. That's kind of cool. I love it. Um, I haven't done this, but I've seen others who do. Have you, where you create a hinge with a piece of canvas that's art to cover some kind of a thing, a box you don't want to oh, be seen? Oh, yeah. I did this what? in college. Oh, yeah. But it wasn't it wasn't to cover a, a alarm panel. It was what to was cover it? my secret area. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I actually helped my friend Steve Marks. To cover your ha- secret crea- area. Create like this area t- on his bedside table where he had a little drop down hinge thing oh, so funny. he could easily access his personal belongings. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Yeah. But flash forward to the I, day. I, and I actually, when I talk to him lately, I'm always like, Steve, you still have your secret compartment on oh, your bedside table. See? Yeah, yeah, it's funny. But you could do this without even being a super spy. You no. could do this to cover an alarm panel. Well, that's true. I mean, and, and again, this is a simple fix. You just get a framed Canvas. Paint, canvas of yeah. some sort with your art on the other side and then attach hinges to the piece itself. On the one side. And then you attach those same hinges to the wall yeah. with drywall anchors. And it opens and up. And it folds open and then it, slow, it like closes a book. like a book. Yeah. It's very cool. I mean, it's kind of neat. Yeah, you know it really I mean? is. My dad had something like this where he, this was his little secret stash. And he was always worried. In fact, we, we were burglarized at one point, although they I don't think they were smart. It was a full-length mirror. 
and he, and he created like he dug into the wall and created little shelves. Oh, that's great! And that's where he kept you know jewels and coins and that's a really good idea. And that was like a safe, if yeah, you will. There yeah. was no lock on it because no, to the average eye, it looked just like a full length mirror. Boy, and that had, lucky Chucky, he knew he knew some well, things. And he had the hinges, and and you just open this full length mirror, so you could kind of go fancy and and kind of dig into the wall. Sure, if you wanted, that's huh? a great idea. Yeah, a little shelving. I like it. It. What about spray paint paper mache layers to kind of create zinc? Alphabet layer letters. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So you're just getting the the uh, the standard sort of wood frame letters. At yeah, the, get the at letters. The Michaels or yeah. the art supply stores. They're everywhere. And then you can either a paper mache stuff on. You could actually apply gold leaf, silver Rust leaf, oleum, whatever, metallic. or spray paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's something about you know the the metal look that I think really looks cool. Like for instance, it's almost like a diner. You could get the word eat and put yeah. it in your kitchen over the oven, you know, or right. whatever you want to say. Now I did this in my my our bathroom where the kids take showers all the time, and and uh, I tried to do some sort of a configuration where I had. Each person had an individual towel rack or towel hook, and then I put the initials of their name above it. And, of course, no one ever uses it, and it failed miserably, but it looks great. Well, at least... What do they do? They take the fresh towels, throw them on the floor. But someday it'll make an impression. I think down the road they're going to remember, and (laughs) maybe (laughs) when they have kids or something. And then if people come into that restroom and they look at the wall, it's like, what is... What is... Wow, but you know, like the the my kids' names don't spell anything, and they just can't, oh. can't quite figure out what I was doing. Well, here's something that's kind of fun. I I like to plan menus in advance. Um, it kind of helps. I mean, I don't. I'm not always doing this, but I try to as much as as possible. Kind of plan for the week ahead, and so you know, it kind of saves you when you're grocery shopping, and then it kind of helps you not to. I have a rule that we don't repeat the same meal two days in a row. Right. So we kind of mix it up so that the leftovers will happen. Two days from now, not, oh, that's not tomorrow. Oh, that's good idea. And so um, what you could do, though, to kind of create some art that's fun and it kind of gives you a kitschy diner look is you get a picture frame with glass, you know, and then you get a piece of patterned scrapbook paper to fit inside the frame. Very cheap, easy, 12 by 12. And then you use some vinyl uh, cut letters for each day of the week. You know, and then yeah, a dry erase marker, and now you're all set to go. You could you could make it a to do list. You could make it whatever, and it's easy on, easy off. You can wipe off the glass. Very cool. And and now it's art. There you go. I yeah. like it. I That's mean, you could good. even put fabric in there if you weren't really keen on the uh, the scrapbook paper. You could come up with wallpaper. You know, fabric. That's a good idea. Well, we have so many more. See, We're this still very talk- inexpensive art solutions on your walls. For what the could walls? be better? We're off the wall. Uh, Get it? Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole. We have more fun to talk about as always because we love to help you improve your home and improve your life. He says his name is William. I'm sure he's Bill, Billy, or Mac or Buddy. Welcome back. You're listening to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, I'm Eric Stromer. And uh, we're talking about things you can do to your walls, things that you can do to make your walls look colorful and fun and interesting and express yourself without having necessarily to go and buy artwork. That's exactly You know, right. you might have a couple of walls here and there where you go, you know, I, I think I just need something, a little something, something there. And so how about a wall of sequins? Now, Work with me here. It probably sounds a little too girly. Sounds kind of, no, it sounds a little like Liberace's house. Probably. Kind could of fun. Be, could be cool. Kind of different, though. I mean, you have it's not for everybody. It is definitely sparkly, but there are some these uh, sequins that you can get that are super big. I mean, they're kind of like larger than life. Like, yeah, almost like those Vegas curtains from the 70s. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. like 60 millimeters in diameter, right. right? And so you would get about 600 of these. This is going to be like a wall of sequins. And I know you're big on foam board. Yeah. But you get a few of these large but thin foam board. And the idea is you're going to basically pin the sequins into the foam board, but to create kind of a sparkly background because there's going to be some gaposis. You would get some uh, gold cheap wrapping paper, cover the foam board, and then some good uh, masking tape, and then you would just basically, and then with these pins, you get some of the, the large sequin pins, um, and you're just going to pin the sequins into the board. And it's just kind of... So it they, looks, they're just discs that sort of hang there. Yeah, and shimmer. That's and, so cool. And just kind of... I know, actually really like flutter. that. Yeah. It, and then if you put a light source on it, it would really pop out. It would look like you're... 
It's your showbiz room. Right. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Actually. I mean, it's almost kind of a retro mirrored wall that you've done yourself. Very cool. You know, so it's just a little idea. We're just kind of giving you some some food for thought. Now, maybe the next time you go to a thrift store, if you are into thrift stores, you know, bargain hunting, there might be some old paintings, maybe, you know, like this kind of a, a, a mountain with a river and pine trees. I mean, kind of a very basic pastoral kind of a look, right? Well, there's this kind of a, a fun thing that you can do to upgrade it, and that is to buy um, some of these stencil letters, like black stencil letters that are already set to go. You just have to cut them out, and you can put a saying right on top of this vintage uh, painting, and and when you frame it, it just kind of becomes a little bit different. In fact, you can take it to the next level where now you're pulling as you take the, the letters, you, you tape the letters on and then paint over it and then pull the letters off. Oh, that's kind of And now cool. let's say if you painted white over the entire painting, let's say you put, I was lucky like a four-leaf clover. Yeah. And you put that over your painting, then you paint white or spray paint white over the whole thing, and then you just pull those stenciled letters off. Oh, now so the, the letters show the old the painting. The color. Yeah, that's isn't that cool. fun? It is cool. Yeah. Because who cares? You know, it was what, a $2 purchase, cover, cover it and amend it and make it yeah. your own. That's great. And you can come up with whatever saying, whatever you like, make it your own, make it personal. Very I think cool. it's just kind of you know, You know what I'm, I'm constantly amazed by? Number one, you know, like when I go to Starbucks every day. <laughs> Multiple and, times. And, you know, there's coffee stirrers, right? Yes. And you just throw them out. Are you there's talking those green ones, which the ones that hold that, that fill hold the hole. that fill the hole, and then there's just the regular coffee stirrers the that you get. Any, you know, so grab a handful of those, or of if the you wood, probably already have the wooden oh, ones, the wood right? Ones. Okay. And get yourself a little a little piece of balsa wood, you know, and and then a frame. And all you're going to do is you're going to individually paint these sticks different colors and sizes. You can break them by hand and then just glue them to the balsa wood panel and then put a little frame around it. So it looks like just a multi-tiered, almost like siding of all different colors that just gives you this real interesting texture and these color combinations that are really cool. Kind of Mondrian-ish. There you go. It looks exactly. very And then it, it's, a, again, you've taken something that you take for granted, you throw them out every day and turn them into art. Well, I've always been about the bling and in fact, this I've seen this uh, after we've painted our, our room, kind of inspired by what you did with your navy walls. Yep. We have our family room now kind of in a, in a shade of navy with the pop of white ceiling and the pop of white molding. I thought, wouldn't it be neat if the ceiling now had little teeny tiny lights that almost look like stars? Oh. Okay. So check this out. This is something that anyone can do. Um, and, and a lot of people have this in their bedroom or I've seen this done like in their entertainment room. But the idea is you, you get a canvas, you know, like may, maybe like a 36 by 24 canvas. Yeah. You paint, um, you get some paint for the canvas and then you're going to use uh, some of those white Christmas lights. And the idea is then you're going to, you know, basically have the Christmas lights peering through, uh, gently through the, the, the fabric. You're going to have kind of like this this stretch canvas from the art supply store. And then maybe, you know, let's say if you use it like a, a pink, a pale pink latex paint, or maybe you have, you know, you want to use the white because you're going to use it against your navy walls. But then you plot out your design by penciling dots on the back, keeping them about a half inch apart, and then you gently press, you know, an all through each dot to make a hole slightly smaller than the diameter of the bulb, and then using these Christmas lights, right? And then you press a bulb into each hole, kind of like we do with our pumpkins, sure, yeah, with craft glue, and now you have what looks like this illuminated, interesting. Light. Oh, that's good. It's like a series of lights on the canvas. And it's so very pretty. I was, but wouldn't that be cool on a ceiling? I actually did that in a bed frame okay. where I did these little little hole. Little, I just drilled little different size holes in the in the back canvas. of the frame. There was a kid's bed frame. Cute. And I drilled through the wood and then put a light source behind it so just light shined Neat. shined out through the uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. through the back of the thing. Yeah, it was cool. Really cool. That's so a we great could, idea. So we could take this uh, canvas, and, and whether you want it on your wall or maybe even your ceiling, but then the catch becomes, where is the electric source? Sure. Unless you used battery operated. Or you just plug it into the wall, and there it is. Okay. Yeah. If it's on the wall, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Good um, idea. Many, many ideas to decorate your wall. Now, how about just a, a, an adorable display of teeny tiny mirrors all combined. And they didn't have to be teeny tiny. I, I think that um, there's something about just mirrors all together that makes, it isn't about seeing yourself. It's about 
the just a little bit of reflection of light, you know, and if you have different ones, they're all gold frames. Yeah, that's a really good idea. I love that too. Even layering the frames. So, you know, you have one bigger mirror behind and then one ab- uh-huh. in front of it. Oh. And you're hanging from the ceiling with, you know, on wire. Nice. So that it's like three different layers of either pictures or mirrors on the wall. Like, like, like they're literally leaning against each other on the wall. That sounds very... Isn't that cool? That sounds a lot, that sounds a lot like um, our friend Paul. Yeah. That does this, yeah. right? Where Paul he, Devine. He, does, he hangs frames yep. of artwork and he's... He's layering almost like one over the other. Exactly. Like you put a like vest. Like catching a corner of one in yeah. front of the other. Yeah. So you said hang it from the ceiling. So what would we use in you the could, ceiling? Well, you could either use dry, probably drywall anchors with either, you know, why probably high tensile strength wire if it's a heavy mirror so that, you know, it's definitely solid enough. And then uh, that would be enough or find uh, the, the joist in the ceiling and hook into those with... Um, you know, some kind of heavy duty eye hook, you know, you could do it that way too. Neat. Yeah. We're all about the canvas. Um, and it, it, it's so, it looks so rich. I think when you go and buy these pre made little canvas pieces of fabric that are already, I guess, wrapped around a frame is how you describe it. Sure. Right. It's yeah. kind of like a little, it's like a shoe box, but it's yeah. all set to go. And now you can, you can make it your own by getting some of these little wooden letters that you also would find like at a, at a Michael's, right? right? I mean, a lot of times you could go online and see that the, some of the stuff sells for hundreds of dollars, but now you're making it for just a fraction. So when you go to the artsy craftsy store, you get, you know, you'll see in the, in that art supply section, little thin wooden letters. And av- as you figure out what you want to say, you come up with some poetry, some little loving, meaningful, you know, live, laugh, love, or whatever you want right, to say, right. but you would spray glue to the back of the can and pay, and put each of these wooden letters on this white canvas. But then here it becomes the chic part, is that now you spray paint white on top of it. So it's white on white, and it really looks store-bought. And then especially if you get a piece of white molding, and you just set it on this, like a little shelf on the wall. That's very cool. You know what else is great? Speaking of shoe boxes, yeah. if you have a bunch of shoe boxes left over, take those, yes. spray paint them entirely, and then paint a color in the back of the inside of the box, affix those boxes to the wall, and then have little lightweight you know, display items within those boxes. They become like shadow boxes. Very clever. What could be bad about that? Very cute. Now, if you, if you have an artist in the family, and I know you with Willow, she loves all of her... She's really into... To crayons, probably in yeah, chalk. Sure. Is she into colored pencils? Yeah, she is. Okay, so you can now organize your art supplies. So picture this: it's almost like a rainbow of all of those pencils. Like if she has a a, a kit of, let's say, probably five hundred of these, right. it would go from really really subtle yellow, 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 orange, 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 oh, red, red, right. red, red, Gra- red, 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 gradated, yeah, you by know, color. Uh huh. Very and cute. And then and what you would do is you can you can buy this spectacular set of of colored pencils, and then well, hang on a second, we'll come back in a minute. We're going to describe how you you would need about five hundred of these, and we're going to show you how you can display this in many more ways to make boring, simple, vacant walls your own. Fantastic. Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole, thanks for hanging with us because we'd love to help you improve your home and improve your life. And welcome back. You're listening to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, I'm Eric Stromer. And we're talking about just oodles and oodles of ways to really feel like you finally have your walls going. Wow, it's pretty. It isn't like I had to go buy some artwork. I mean, yes, I have some pictures here and there, but there's a little blank corner here that I want to fill up with some sure. color. And we were talking about colored pencils. And if if you have... Well, maybe you are the artist in the family, and if you had as many as 500 of these colored pencils, the idea is to affix them to the wall so they almost are kind of in like a slide bar of some kind, right? Yeah, and and basically what they're going to do is you're going to gray date them like a uh, paint swatch like ombre. chip. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're going to go from lighter to darker. And uh, you can either permanently affix them to the wall with a with glue or adhesive, or you can 
find these uh, these devices that where you slide them in and it's a plastic frame and then you just attach those to the wall. Yeah. It's really, it's a beautiful effect. It really is. And it? it's a great way to organize all your colored pencils. Right. Because have, you seen, have you seen the one with the corks? No, what's that one? So you just have, say you have like, you know, 50 corks. Like you can, wine corks? Just or wine corks. You, oh, you, just glue, corks. you just glue the end to the wall and create a square shape uh, or rectangular shape and the corks themselves right next to one another become like a little art piece. See, that really is is very interesting because a lot of the corks um, have different shapes. In fact, you could even use champagne cork, wine cork, you know, whatever kind of corks. And it's okay if they have, like some of the wine corks, like if you drink a glass of, you know, red wine, it kind of takes on that burgundy color, whereas yeah. the white wine, it stays kind of goldeny, And it's okay because it looks pretty to have almost like, like a the tapestry. The irregularity is the mm-hmm. best part of it, mm-hmm. yeah. And it, it's also another great way to soundproof a room. It looks like a great way to make like a recording studio sound dead inside that room. Mm-hmm. It's great. I've tried this before, and I, I have to admit that it's tricky to have this work um, and last year round. I'm talking about a living, uh, vertical hanging succulent garden. And and basically you use some chicken wire and, and you empty out a frame and you put in the back um, some soil and then you get a little bit of wood to basically create the the pot, if you will, yeah. to house these little teeny tiny succulents where you, you take most of the dirt away, you just get a little bit of the root, and you use some chopsticks, and you just tuck one by one, you know, this, the succulents in, and then you add some moss. And I have this in my little outdoor cove where I work on, on plants. I did this a couple years ago. Um, not all the succulents are living. So I just have to caution you that if you do this, you have to make sure that it's in the right kind of lighting and, you know, it can get messy to water, but it really is pretty to have living, living right. art. And you see this a lot at restaurants and outdoor, you know, entertainment areas, especially. Sure, sure, sure. But what you don't remember, I think a lot of times people don't realize when they see public spaces, you know, that that folks are hired to literally pull the dead plants out and yeah. replace them immediately. So, you know, you definitely want to make sure that you you know you may have to do some maintenance on something like this. But having said that, when you create, it's a shadow box essentially with the dirt medium to, to hold the succulents and hopefully they root and the moss covers anything that's bare within that configuration, then what, would, what, what do you do? You spray with a hose? Do you just water the whole panel? Now, the hose was a little too aggressive. Right. It's a little too aggressive yeah. because then it, it takes a lot of the soil and it, it beats the stuff out of the thing. I mean, okay. it's kind of a gentle, it's a gentle little living frame. So I actually used a, a bottle mister. Oh, okay. Or sometimes I would take it off the wall and put it on the ground and give it a little bit of a heavier soaking, but I wouldn't just blast it on the wall because sure. it, it, you notice that some of the stuff starts, you, lo- you lose some of the support system. Oh, yeah, yeah, the dirt. Well, yeah. It's like erosion it shows ki- up. Kind yeah. of. Right, yeah. right, right. So, but I mean, not to sound negative, it definitely is a fun project to try. Just as, It's one of those where you might go, well, just beware, you know, that you're going to have to change it out. It's not right. going to be forever, but it's right. fun. How many of us have CD jewel cases just sitting around? I got about 500 of them. Well, you have a CD or two out there. I, well, yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, seriously, there's so many of them from, in a, from years and okay. years of collecting CDs that are obsolete now. So you know what? These actually look really cool. If you get some kind of abstract photos, maybe even when you focus in on the light, let's say Christmas lights or any kind of a light, whatever season it is, but you know how when you kind of rack focus and it doesn't look like anything in particular, but the light just kind of looks like, right. you know, right, right. if you were to get a series of those photos, or you could even make it like a puzzle, but you would line up, let's say nine of these CD jewel cases because they make great frames. You fill the photos into, um, you know, these little cases and then you mount those on the wall and it looks pretty cool. It could that almost cool. It could almost be too where it's the the sum of the parts, like it's one big photo, but you divide it up into sections. You cut it into sections oh, yeah. and put those individual, like it's a picture of your dog, right? And then you cut up the nine sections, and they're in. The oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, 
I, I mean, like it's that. inexpensive. Yes, it is. You know, you, you have the, the CD cases. It looks kind of retro because it has, you know, that sleek look. Just make sure you get the ones that are, are not scratched already. Because have yeah. you noticed? The CD cases, they don't, they, they don't they get They scratched. don't look clear, yeah. And when they're fuzzy and scratched, it and ruins. And it looks like a bad idea. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how about just clipboards, spray paint them gray. I've seen this. And then just attach them in a series, maybe three vertical, and then next to that, another three vertical. And then you can... You know, have that as an art wall, and that's where you can either constantly re, you know, rehang new kid art stuff, which I have no shortage of. <laughs> Having three kids, I've got about five thousand things that are like, oh my god, you're a genius! Look, honey, it's Picasso. That's the best stick figure I've ever seen. I've got about ten thousand of See? those. See, and, yeah. and now you can change them out. Now you can change them out and, and, and rotate your collection. Or how about? Using some of those pieces of art, or or taking photos of the art and making it into an easy DIY wall clock. Oh, that's good. So the idea is, we all know that you can get the makings of the little center part of the clock, the battery operated, you know, with the hands and so forth, anywhere, right? The Michaels right. store. But now instead of the numbers, it's a picture of your child's artwork, or photos of you and whomever, or your pets, or. Isn't that kind of neat? That's kind of a good idea, yeah. Yeah, so you, you would just need you need to have twelve photos. That's it, and you're and you're good. It's to go. half past Uncle Dan. See, is how you can call, you that, tell the time. I think that's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. I like it. But it's all it's all about unleashing you know your creative ideas so that you don't feel like you're just staring. By at By the way, all these products have so far cost maybe thirteen dollars. Right, all these things that we've come up with, and this is inexpensive, almost free to the user. Art. And it's fun. Yeah. Now, if you haven't started to display dishes yet, got to tell you, it. Um, I have them um, not on the walls. I'm thinking about doing this in our in our navy family room because I have a lot of dishes that have a lot of china that have navy and white, but I have them displayed on a uh, like a in wall bookshelf which is kind of cool, in the dining room. But there's something about getting a lot of white plates in different uh, textures. And if you have a bunch of those, and you just kind of make like, let's say like 50 of them, and you fill the whole wall with different shapes, like oblong and really round and square, and it's they're all white. And then if you had another pattern, well, let's say it's black and white or navy and white, and intersperse those, now you have almost this amazing masterpiece. Right, right exactly. And, you know, they sell those plate display clips. Thank you. That's the key, isn't it? Right. And then they're really easy to attach. They just, you know, the wall anchors into into drywall and then the plate hangs within that device and those are available online to feature china, you know. Yeah. But you can create really cool patterns using those to create any design you want. Now, you know, don't forget using flooring for the walls. We were in a facility just, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago and it actually, the, the lobby used wood like laminate flooring on really? the on the wall. And it almost had like a bamboo look. It worked kinda, really, it was kinda, kinda great. Cool. Yeah. Or even salvaged wood, you know, turning yeah, that sure. into a black wall that now looks really rustic and great. Anyway, all these ideas as always we will put them on the website for you at yourhomewizards.com. Thanks for hanging with us and remember this until next time the key is under the mat. <laughs>